Hi there. Um, the goal of this video is to configure a router for cube functionality. Um, in this lab, um, what we are going to do is we are going to configure a cube router. Um, the topology is pretty simple. There is a call manager server. Um, there is an IP phone uh, with an extension 1004 and the goal is for 1004 to be able to call 555-2000 which resides in PSTN and for 555-2000 to be able to call 1004 via cube. Um, first thing that we need to do is on the COCM side um, let's see what is configured and what is not configured on the COCM side um, the only thing right now that's configured are just two phones um, the CIPC phone which is this right here 1004 and there is a hard phone 7960 which is 1005 um, of course extension to extension calling is enabled um, what we are going to do right now is create a trunk uh, pointing to the cube. So let's do that first. Nothing is configured right now, so we're going to add a SIP trunk that's going to go to the cube router. We'll call it trunk to cube. Give it the device pool. Calling search spaces. Right now we're going to keep everything simple. So significant digits are going to be all. Um, we need to define a SIP profile and we need to give it a SIP security profile. The IP address of the cube is 192.168.17.180. That's going to be the IP address of the cube. No normalization. Uh, nothing else is required. Just make sure that the calling source spaces and the device pools are correct. We're going to save this. Reset the trunk, which is a requirement. Save it. Now let's go back. And now we have a trunk saved. At this moment, if we dial the 555-2000 number, this is the PSDN phone, 555-2000, from this phone, let's see what the results are. And the call is going to fail. So, for us to be able to call this number, we need to create a route pattern. Right now, there's no route pattern. So, let's create a route pattern. Let's call it 555XXX. and let's forward it directly to the cube trunk to cube save it now we have a 555xxx still now the call manager knows where to transfer the call but the call will fail because we haven't configured the cube end of it yet so let's do that here is the cube router. As you can see, there is nothing configured other than the IP address on the uh, interfaces. So let's start configuring this cube router. First thing is first. Um, let's just change the name, make it a little bit fancier. Second, um, Let's activate the cube functionality.
Second, because of the uh, iOS, we need to define um, trusted list. Otherwise, a, the the calls will fail because uh, by default, this iOS will not process any calls coming in or going out. 15.1 iOSs. I have 15.14 M8. So let's define the trust lists. First I'm going to make it so that it trusts call manager and second it should trust the PSTN. All right? With that, we are good here. Now we need to create a catch all dial peer so that when a call comes in it'll catch the uh, the call and then it'll process it according to the number that has been dialed so let's do that let's call it voice one um, we're going to use incoming call number and that should basically do it you don't have to do uh, no VAD necessarily because it's 15.1 uh, pretty high iOS uh, not necessarily uh, for this but at least uh, we'll still do it so now if you look at the running configuration we have uh, voice service VoIP with uh, the two IPs that we are going to trust we are allowing connections um, so that in that will activate the queue functionality and we have only one uh, dial peer uh, right now which is this right here uh, dial peer voice one wipe incoming call number and that's about it so now let's let's do something here um, let's run a debug um, And let's try making a call from 1004 to the PSTN and see if the cube is now intercepting uh, the call. So let's do that. 555-2-0-0. Dialing. As you can see in the background, the cube has intercepted the call, but the call will fail. And... The reason is that although it has the call, but the cube doesn't know where to forward the call. So let's look at the debug and see what's going on. So we see that the call came in. Uh, destination is 555-2000. And it did uh, hit the incoming dial here as expected. And uh, the call would go basically nowhere because there's no outbound dial here um, configured. So let's do that. Let's forward this call over to the PSTN. And to do that we are going to configure another dial peer. So let's call that dial peer voice 2 VoIP. This time the destination pattern is what we are going to use and the destination pattern is 555 dot 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 so if it gets a number um, four dots if it gets a 555 2000 for example number then it'll take it match it and it should forward the call um, to the PSTN in our case the PSTN is 192.168.30.1 so let's do that 192.168.30.1 Okay, that should do it. Again, very simple. I'm not using any, um, I'm not using uh, any advanced features. I'm not using, I'm not configuring anything else. I just want this call to go through. So now this is done. Now let's see if we can make call. And let's see if if we can uh, uh, make that phone ring. So let's do that. Um, 
You call 555-2000. And here we go. We see the phone uh, ringing. Alright, so let's end the call and let's look at the the debugs that's running in the background to see uh, what has actually happened. Um, going all the way up again, 1004, calling 555. Uh, 555 2000 and yes incoming dial peer 1 which means yes the incoming dial peer 1 um, it took the call it saw the number then now it's going to start matching this number to see what it needs to do with 555 2000 and it matched an outbound dial peer which we configured dial peer 2 and it sent the call out there we go Call is being sent out, everything is good, and then at the end we just disconnected the call and that's where we see the disconnect cost code 16. It is, uh, um, it is this simple, um, you just need to have dial peers configured correctly uh, for the calls to go through. Now let's do um, inbound calling, so we know that 1004 is a number that's configured on the call manager. We know that 555-2000 is the number uh, that's a PSTN call. So now, without making any changes right now, let's try calling 1004 from 555-2000 and let's see what happens. All right, here we go. 555-2000 uh, and 1004. All right, we get a fast busy. Let's end this call right now, and let's see what's happening with the fast busy. Um, all right, catch all. So five 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 two thousand. Incoming dial peer one. Took the number. It's going to try to forward the number, one zero zero four. It has know where to go. It doesn't know what to do with this call. Alright, so let's change that. And to change that, let's configure another dial peer that's going to be pointing towards the SIP trunk of the call manager um, and forward the calls out to the call manager. So let's do that. Um, in order to do that, um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's create a um, another dial peer. This time we'll call it dial peer um, voice um, let's call it 10 boy. All right. Um, the destination pattern is going to be uh, 1004 or 1 dot dot dot, however you want to do it. Let's just do 1004 right now. Um, and session. Uh, target is going to be the IP address of the call manager, which in our case is 17.60. Um, this is a SIP trunk, so session uh, protocol, we have to define session protocol since it's a SIP trunk, uh, SIP version 2, and that should do it. Let's look at the show run now to see what we have done so far. Um, voice service wipe commands have been entered. Um, we have now three dial peers. Dial peer 1, catch all, incoming. Dial peer 2, if it sees 555, send it out to PSTN. Dial peer 10, if it sees 1004, just send it to the call manager. Now let's see if this will work. Um, let's go to the phone again, uh, the PSTN phone. Let's uh, dial the 1004 number and see where it goes. And there we go. Now let's end the call and let's see what's happening here. Alright, looking at the debugs, we see 555-2000. Um, calling number, we see 1004. Um, first thing is first, incoming dial peer 1, which is the catch-all. So I took it, took the call. And now I'm going to start processing the call right here. And what am I going to do with this call? So let's see. It's going to start going through the dial peers to see which dial peer is going to match. And right here, it matched dial peer 10. Um, here you go. That's your setup right here. It's going to start sending the call. 
and the call is completed and it's going to use Dalpia 10 there you go and we just disconnected the call so we're going to see a disconnect cost code of 16 at the end right here all right so it was um, um, so we created the uh, looking back at the diagram we created uh, we created call we created dial peers that uh, would let the call out this way and then out this way then we created dial peers that will take the call and forward the call this way we used only one incoming dial peer on the queue just one incoming dial peer on the queue that was responsible for taking calls from the call manager and from the uh, uh, the PSTN. Now, this is not a practice that should be followed. Yes, you need to create uh, dial peers. Yes, uh, I have generalized a lot of things in this video. Just wanted to make it simple. Just wanted to show uh, how this could be done. Uh, pretty easy stuff. Um, of course you're going to need to generalize this if depending on what your the PSTN is sending you if it is sending you 10 digits 9 digits 11 digits whatever the PSTN is sending you, whichever region you're in um, you have choices for example if your call manager um, if your UC environment is set up for four digits you have choices you can use the cube and translate strip off um, whatever many digits you need to strip off and send the rest of the digits to the call manager to match the extensions or you can send uh, the complete number the full number it could be a 10 a digit number 9 digit number to the call manager and do the strip on the call manager itself the same way is the uh, call out um, for example um, in uh, majority cases uh, when you send out a call you usually dial the 9 and then 1 and then the area code but sometimes the PSTN does not accept the 9-1 or it does not accept the 9 it only accepts the numbers uh, the 9 digits or the 10 digits numbers uh, you can again strip this on uh, at the call manager level or you can send the whole number to the cube or to the router and the router will do the stripping using translations um, that is something that we'll cover in another video um, so far I just wanted to cover uh, basic dial peers and uh, basic cube configuration. Thank you.